Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So something a bit different for you this week. Uh, it's Friday, I've got done what I wanted to get done work-wise. So I'm gonna spend a bit of time doing one of my own projects. So this engine that is looking a bit sorry for itself, it's been sat in the corner for over a year now. It's about time I did a bit of work on this because I wanna get my tractor back together and have my tractor going this year. So this is the engine out of my tractor puller. It's a Leyland 698 engine out of a Leyland 285 tractor. So I took the engine out of the tractor so I could work on it in the workshop without having the whole tractor in here. I took it all in bits and then I've never got any further with it yet. So the reason why I took it out of the tractor is because I wanted some more power out of it. Horsepower is addictive, you can never have enough horsepower. So I took the camshaft out, I got the sham, I took, I sent the camshaft away to get that reground so the camera's got more lift on it now and I'm also putting different pistons in it but what I want to do with the pistons is I need to lower the compression on them so that's what I'm going to do today but yeah this pump as you can tell is not standard for this engine this pump is massive compared to what it had on originally so that's a it's a Zexil pump and it's got 12 mil elements in it and it's 5.7 litre I think they are well, yeah, I've had, I've had to make all this up to fit this pump onto here. Made this stub shaft in the end for the timing gear. So I'll go more into that later when we start to get it running. But for now, what I'm going to do is get the pistons machined. So these are the pistons. These are not the ones that came out, but these are the ones I'm putting back in. These are out of a new type engine. The, the old type engine has another oil ring around the bottom. And I think the top's slightly different. I can't remember. What, what the old one looks like. But anyway, uh, when I got this engine, I rebuilt it because it had worn out. I put new liners in it and six new pistons in it. But I didn't plan on going to the extent that I've gone to power-wise. So with the old pistons, when I lower the compression on them, I just skimmed a bit off the top. And that's not really the proper way to do it. So that's why I'm putting these in so I can alter these differently. So a while ago, I spent a bit of time working out like the volume of the top of the piston. I put a bit of Perspex across the top and then filled it up with diesel to see what the volume of the, of like the dishes and the valve cutouts. And I drew the top of the piston in uh, on shape and worked out what the value of e what the volume of each valve cutout is, sort of that circle there. And then I worked out how much volume I need to take out the piston to get down to the compression ratio that I want. At the moment, these pistons are well, 16.8 to 1 compression ratio, and I want to be down to 13.5 to 1 compression ratio. So I think I worked it out at 12 cc's of volume I need to take out the piston. I'm going to do that by machining some out of the valve cutout rather than taking it off the top. So we'll get all these pistons separated from the rods and maybe take the top ring off and then we can start doing some machining.
So I've got all these, so I've got all the rings, top rings taken off the pistons and all the rods taken off. The reason I took the top rings out is because I'm going to machine a bit off the diameter down to the top ring as well. But we'll do that later. So I made this a while ago. Little, that's the same diameter as the valve cut out. So I can put that in the mill, sit the piston on the rotary table, which I've got the chuck mounted onto. Sit that in, get that lined up with air, like that. Swap it over onto this cutter. So this is, I've just got this cutter specifically for this job. It's got inserts in, it's like an end mill with inserts in. And I've had a bit of a practice on this piston just to see what it was going to cut like, because I've never used it before. So that's gone nice as that. So now we'll get this piston set up, using that to align it. And then hopefully I can cut one and then turn it on the rotary table. If I know how many degrees to turn it and then cut the other one and use the DRO to, to measure how deep I'm cutting. So I think this will work. So I set that up in that cut out at zero degrees on there. And then now I've turned it 115, so 115 and a half degrees. Now it gets me into that one, sits into there. So it's maybe not super, super accurate, but I think it'll be near enough for, for what I want to do. So if I change, if I go back to zero now on there, change cutter over, um, zero it out and then cut whatever I need to cut out of there. And then turn it around 115 degrees and then do the second one. All right, so it turns out that cutter is not actually 45 mil, it's only 40 mil, which to be fair, it does say on the side 40 M. But I said to him, I need a 45 mil cutter, have you got one? This is a link they sent me, so I bought that, and it's only 40 mil, so. So, yeah, we're gonna have to use something else now. So I'll have to take the piston out again, obviously. Take the chuck off, and I think I'll have to put the piston directly onto the rotary table. Center the rotary table up with the spindle and then offset the piston slightly. Then I can use a rotary table, turn it round, maybe still use the same cutter, but I'll just have to be slightly offset to cut out 45 mil with a 40 mil cutter. Just I'll have to set up, I'll have to unclamp it from there and set up every time for every cutout. So I'll have to do 12 separate setups. Whether I'm willing to do that, I'm not sure, but we'll see how, we'll do one and see how it goes and decide from there. Right, so we're on to plan B. So I've got that centered up into there, like that. So now I'm going to change the tool back over onto that one. Sit the piston back on there, like that. Use that to line the piston up where it needs to be. Clamp the piston up onto here, somehow. Then offset 
offset this two and a half mil and then use that 40 mil cutter again wherever it is and then cut it out and then use the rotary table to to cut around it see how that goes So that's that first one done. I think that's all right. We ended up with some bears there. Um, because they're like rounded off of them, like the original ones. So I think I'll just have to file them bits down. 
but I think that's alright. So I'll swap over, do the other one, see how much changing over it takes.
Well, so that went all right, I think. Um, just them bits to clean up, but when I take a bit off the diameter, it'll clean some of that up anyway. Just easy little step. It hasn't quite like, matched up. So I might have to centre the centre the uh, rotary table up a bit better, maybe. Yeah, so that's, that's a before and that's an after. It did move a little bit when I did the second one, whether the clamp came loose or whether I didn't quite tighten it up. So I had to stop and uh, relearn it back up again, but luckily it didn't come out of the two and a half mil offset. So we were all right. Yeah, we'll do the next one. Right, so I've got three done, you get the idea how I'm doing it. So I'll get the other three done. I won't video them because you've already seen that and then show you what we're going to do next. So that's all their machine down now. Well, the valve cart's machine down. So what I'm going to do now is put them in the lathe, turn a, mi turn a millimetre off the diameter and chamfer that top edge. The reason I do that is so if, when the piston gets hot and it expands, it'll get a lot hotter than what it's supposed to do when it's in a tractor puller. Uh, if you take a bit off the diameter and if, when it does expand it doesn't seize up in the bar. It doesn't catch the bar so that's why we do that.
right, it's all in machined up now. So I just want hand dressing up now. I'll have to file them bits out by hand just to get them back rounded again like they were originally. Don't really want any sharp edges because it can cause a place to melt if you've got thin bits. The only thing, what I did do, I stopped short of the ring groove, so where the ring is is still full diameter, but I maybe got too close and then it's left like a thin, I wanted like a chamfer back up to full size, but I maybe got too close and left like a thin ring round there. So I might take that off. It's hard to see. This camera doesn't focus very well compared to my old one. There you can see there, look. So I might take that off. I'll have a think first. Yeah, I'll get them bits dressed round. So that's all the pistons filed down. So they're all done now. I don't really want the rings putting back on. They're a right good clean up. I'm not gonna take the rest of the rings off because I haven't really got a proper set of ring pliers, whatever you call them. So they're, they're quite difficult to get off. So I'll blast them all out with the airline and brake cleaner. Get all the bits out of them. Before I do that, I wanna try them top rings in the bar and make sure I've got enough gap between the end of the rings so when it gets hot the end of the rings don't touch each other because you end up doing some damage if they do that. I've never had that problem before but while they're off we'll, we'll see what they're like. So before I do that I need to clean these balls up. I didn't realise how bad they'd gotten. I thought I did put some oil down them but obviously not so they're pretty rusty now with the balls. Pattern number one because I had a piston in there when I was measuring how far up it came. So we'll turn the block on its side and then we'll glaze bust it. So I made this engine stand a while ago. I just made it up out of off cut bits of plate. They wanted bracing up a bit more really, but yeah, it's got a gearbox on there. So I just turn the handle and I can tip it whichever angle I want it at.
Right, so we've got all them uh, glaze busted out. They've cleaned up nice. There's a bit around the top still, but a bit of carving around the top still. But now they've cleaned up well compared to what they were. There's a bit of a bit of rust and stuff in them where I've been cleaning the cleaning the deck off a bit. So what I'll do now is I'll put them top rings all in and see what the gap measures like. So I've got all them rings in, in there and then I've used a feeler gauge. I don't use it very often so it's a bit rusty but um, there's two shims there that measure 0 0.45 of a millimetre. It's nearly half a mil and that fits in there nice. You could probably do with another one. Another shim in as well but bit loose as that so I think that's plenty they're all the same so yeah they seem all right I'm not going to bother doing any of the other the other rings because see, I've never had problems before I've never done it never checked the gap before so I think it'll be all right I found a really helpful website for jobs like this it's competitiondiesel.com if you're in the UK you can't get on it without you need a VPN to get on it because you have to change your location, obviously. It's not a website that's accessible outside the US, but it's real helpful for for stuff like this, knowing your like your valve, your ring gaps and stuff like that. So yeah, if you're into if you're into modifying engines, diesel engines, it's worth looking on that website. Yes, that's all I've really got time for today. I have to oil them balls up again so they don't go rusty. I've given the deck a bit of a clean up, I'll have to oil that up. And these all want a right good clean up and put back together. But because the cutter was wrong for these, it took me more time than expected to machine the pistons down. So I haven't got as much done as what I wanted. I wanted to have the pistons back in, ready for the head to go back on. But I've been sent this this week by Mike, who's a long time subscriber. He's become a UK distributor of Ankalu. So it's been difficult to get hold of in this country. Um, you see it used a lot on the US machining channels. So it must be good stuff. I've, I've not had a go with it myself yet, but he's asked if I could share the eBay link for it. So it'll be in the description if you want any. So yeah, hope you found that interesting. Uh, like I say, I want the track to back up and running again for this season. So while I'm putting it back together, I might as well video it and take you along with me.
if you're interested. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.